Bismillah, bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa wala, amma ba'd. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Is everybody doing? Good? Alhamdulillah. So today, inshallah ta'ala, we're continuing and we're going to be finishing, inshallah, uh, this surah, uh, surah Nazi'at, starting from this last portion here in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions the question that these disbelievers are asking They ask you, the you here is singular And so it's speaking directly about the Prophet They ask you, O Muhammad about the hour The hour, as in judgment day When is its arrival? So after giving evidence for Judgment Day in Ayat 27 to 33, and after warning about what will actually take place from Ayat 34 to 41, now the disbelievers seem to have finally been piqued in terms of their curiosity, and so they ask, fine, fine. If, let's say, theoretically, I believe you, or let's say maybe, you know, you've gotten my attention. Okay, fine, when is this day? Uh, and so they're asking this question. It's very interesting that Allah Ta'ala calls this time, a sa'a. Why is it the hour? Because it's the hour after which there are no more hours. And in fact, the term mursa is used twice in the Quran for the establishment of the hour, once in Surah uh, 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 A'raf, Ayat 187, and here in Surah Nazi'at, Ayat number 42. And another time you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this term in Surah Hud, Ayat number 41, when Allah is talking about what? Anchoring. Anchoring the boat that, that Nuh was on. And Nuh, Nuh said, "Embark therein in the name of Allah. It, uh, uh, in the name of Allah is its course and its anchorage. Mursa is the anchorage. So then the question becomes: Why would this term of Mursa only be used for two things: Judgment Day and anchoring a ship? Allah alam, but I have a hypothesis about this, and Allah knows best. But my 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 thought process goes as follows." Time is always flowing, kind of like you can imagine a ship sailing through the sea, going on the tide, just moving, flowing along. And subhanAllah, judgment day, you can imagine like throwing the, uh, the anchor overboard and just stops everything. It's like the end of time. That's really what we call it. We call it the end of time. So subhanAllah, it seems to be a parallel here, or there's this sort of common uh, idea here of just stopping the end of time here, and hence why uh, there's that correlation between the two. Yes, and... Uh, uh, also, Allah Ta'ala uses used this, the verb uh, form of it, arsaha, when Allah Ta'ala used uh, this idea of pegging or anchoring the mountains. And we talked about that before, of how the mountains, they keep the earth firm and they keep all the tectonic plates in, in place. So anyhow, um, yes, it's very interesting that to each of these questions, there's so many times that Allah Ta'ala says, yes, alunaka, yes, alunaka. In fact, it occurs 15 times in the Quran. They ask you about the new moon. They ask you about what they should spend. They ask you about the sacred month. They ask you about gambling and wine and gambling. They ask you about the orphans. They ask you about menstruation. They ask you about uh, what has been made lawful for them. They ask you about the hour when it has arrived. And this is, uh, uh, you know, mentioned twice, once, like I said, in Surah Araf and once in Surah and as the, the, these two times. And so there's 15 different instances, uh, uh, subhanAllah, and each time the command qul comes afterwards, as in say, implying what the Prophet Muhammad is supposed to inform them. Uh, but with the exception of this last one, uh, in which say is implicit. You don't have the word qul there. Either way, the answer, uh, uh, the, the answer was never tell them not to ask, proving that Islam encourages inquiry. So subhanAllah, you never find that they ask you about this. No, don't ask this question. No, you find that subhanAllah, they get answers. It also seems that this is, could be a sarcastic question. Oh yeah, when is this judgment day you keep talking to me about? You keep warning me about it. Well, when is it? You know, why don't you hurry it up? And in fact, this seems to be uh, what is implied uh, in, in, in certain, uh, like for example, when Allah Ta'ala mentions in Surah Shura, Ayah number 18, Those who do not believe in it are impatient for it. So it could be that they're asking, when is it? Get, you know, bring it on. You know, I want to see it. Why? Because they don't really believe in it, and so they are impatient for it. And so it could be condescending, which would be paralleling the sarcastic questions they asked at the beginning of the surah, ayat 10 and 11. You find that there's a parallel between the beginning and the end. It started with sarcastic questions, and now it is ending with sarcastic questions as well. And you always find this sort of, uh, uh, these ring structures or these sort of parallels throughout the Qur'an, beginning and end. Then Allah Ta'ala says what? In response, fima anta min dhikraha. In what position are you that you should mention it? Now, th this ayah has a number of different ways that it can be understood and translated. Ibn Abbas and al-Bahawi, they say, and others, they say that this means what? You have no knowledge of it. 
What, 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 you don't have any knowledge of it. Implying what? You, the disbeliever, and even the Prophet Muhammad and even the angels, they don't know when is a sa'a, when judgment day is. Fima and tamin dhikraha. You don't know, you don't, you don't know when, what, uh, when it is. Also, it could imply what? Where are you with regards to its, remem- its mention and its remembrance? In other words, how much have you prepared for it? How ready are you for it? So you're asking, when is it coming? And, uh, you know, there's a very uh, beautiful quote that says, uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, I don't have to get ready because I stay ready. I think that's how it goes, right? You know, I stay, re- yeah, no, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready, something like that. Uh, and the idea is you always stay trained, you always stay ready, so you don't have to be prepared for that when that moment comes. It's, you're always ready for that moment. And so this is kind of the idea. Don't, Allah Ta'ala is not telling them when Judgment Day is, because you should just be ready all the time. You should be ready to meet your Lord. So this is another perspective on it. Number one, you don't have any knowledge of it. Number two, where are you with regards to being ready for this day? Are you prepared? And another possibility is what? With regards to this matter, with regards to this matter of Judgment Day, you, O Muhammad Sallallahu are from its mention. Fima anta min dhikraha. You are from its mention. In other words, you are min alamat al saa as the Prophet says, what? بُعِثْتُ أَنَا وَالسَّاعَةُ كَهَاتَيْنِ قَالَ وَضَمَّ السَّبَّابَةِ وَالْوُسْطَى That the Prophet said, what? I was sent, uh, uh, I was sent, me and the hour, as in Judgment Day, كَهَاتَيْنِ Like these two, and he held up his index and his middle finger, indicating what? That I am right near the end of uh, uh, time, essentially. And this, uh, even more, is emphasized when Allah Ta'ala says, what? Uh, to your Lord is the finality. In other words, nobody else knows. You can't say, oh, I can't, maybe let me check with this person or that person. No, it's not going to work except going to directly to Allah Ta'ala. Because only Allah Ta'ala, that's where the end of the line is. And that's where this knowledge is found. Nobody else knows it. And also another interpretation is to say what? That Allah Ta'ala is emphasizing that uh, subhanAllah, he sent the Prophet as the final messenger. Nobody else is going to have dhikraha. Nobody else is going to have its mention like the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because after him, there will be no other prophets. I mean, what do prophets do? They prophesy. They give you all the descriptions and the details that are authentic about Judgment Day. So all these MBA throughout history have mentioned Judgment Day. And now Allah Ta'ala is saying, listen, I'm the one who's sending the final messenger. This is the end. This is the last time you're going to get an authentic reminder of what this day looks like, what's going to happen, essentially all the prophecies, because this is the last prophet. So subhanAllah, that seems to be another uh, perspective on the matter. And Allah Ta'ala knows best. And a third interpretation about this ayah, Allah Ta'ala could be praising the Prophet ﷺ for reminding others so much about Judgment Day. Fima anta min dhikraha. You are the one who is constantly mentioning and reminding. And this is one, uh, one perspective. There's a hadith to it. Unfortunately, I had it, then I uh, lost it. <laughs> anyway, there's a hadith mentioned, uh, a certain sahabi, he mentions how the Prophet ﷺ would talk about Yom uh, al-Qiyamah uh, uh, so often to the disbelievers that Allah Ta'ala revealed this ayah, saying what? You keep talking about it, you keep reminding them about it. And this is so critical that we remember that da'wah is about reminding people about Judgment Day. And I really do find that, even for myself, I don't make that enough of the emphasis. When it comes to da'wah, when I speak to non-Muslims, the emphasis is about Islam is very convincing and God is one and that God sends messengers and books and this is revelation, this is how we should be, this is how we should not be, and all these different things. But what I rarely do is give the warning. You're going to die. This is coming. You could die any moment. Realize you're going to be facing judgment day. You're supposed to be reminding them so much, so constantly. Fima anta min dhikraha, wallahu ta'ala alam, it could be almost like a praise of the Prophet that Allah Ta'ala is expressing, you could say, like ta'ajub or like uh, amazement, like how amazing that how often you dhikraha, that you mention this uh, uh, judgment day so regularly. And Allah knows best. Yes, and also notice that the Prophet isn't answering the question with when is the hour. Instead, he's just reminding them to prepare for that day. Why? Because uh, Allah Ta'ala says, right, uh, uh, that you're just a warner. You're just a warner for those who have fear of Allah. You're just going to warn them. Right? So in other words, I don't have to give you the details of when, who, what, how. I'm just warning you this is going to take place. When it happens, Allah knows. And also, since this may be a sarcastic question, when it comes to rude and sarcastic questions, just remember, not every question necessarily needs an answer. Or it doesn't have to be directly answered the way they're demanding. No, I want it, these details. No, no, I'll give you the answer that you need to hear, not just what you're demanding of me. Allah Ta'ala has more wisdom than that. 
and a very important lesson that we should remember is what? Not everybody who asks about knowledge benefits from that knowledge. So you have to ask yourself, of all the Islamic knowledge that I have, how much of it am I actually benefiting from? How much do I actually apply it? Because yes, Allah Ta'ala says, Fima anta min dhikraha, and then ila rabbika muntahaha, Allah, to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is its finality. Muntaha is the absolute end, the finality. In other words, the last decision goes to Allah Ta'ala and nobody else can say, no, I think this, or my opinion is that, or this is what I know, or this is what I deduce. No, it, the finality of it goes to Allah Ta'ala. Then Allah says, innama anta munziru man yakhshaha. You are only a warner for, the, for those who fear. So you can warn everybody in the world, but only if they have that khashya in their heart, which was mentioned earlier, and I'm not going to go back over all the notes we talked about then, but khashya was mentioned earlier in the surah, and Allah Ta'ala is reminding, going back to this theme of khashya, saying this is the only way this reminder will have a benefit. Fear is on the inside, therefore our duty is to warn everybody. You don't know who fears Allah and who doesn't. You can guess, but you don't actually know. Allah Ta'ala is adjusting our expectations, however, by informing us that our warnings will only benefit those who have God consciousness and a sense of self-preservation. A lot of people don't. So yes, you have to warn everybody because you can't check people's hearts, but at the end of the day, I'm just, Allah Ta'ala is warning you that look, don't expect everybody to be appreciative and grateful for their warnings. Why? Because Allah, as Allah Ta'ala says right at the beginning of Surah Baqarah, Alif Lam Mim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ It's not hudan lin, uh, it is hudan lin nas, it is guidance for mankind, but just because it's for everybody doesn't mean everybody will actually apply it. The, it's for everybody. Anybody can, has, has access to it from that perspective. So it is hudan lin nas from that sense. But will everybody apply it? No. Many people will ignore. Then, therefore, Allah Ta'ala specifies says hudan lil muttaqeen. It's for everybody, but only the people of taqwa will actually apply it. And Allah knows best. Final ayah, Allah Ta'ala says what? And after this, I have the uh, ring structures, inshallah, which I hopefully you guys will enjoy. Uh, I actually missed the last one, so I have to do two back to back, but it should be fine, inshallah. Final ayah, Allah says what? كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا كَأَنَّهُمْ uh, that Allah ta it says it will be on, uh, on that day that they see as though they had not remained in the world. كَأَنَّهُمْ it'll be as if they the day on which they see it, this judgment day, lam yalbathu, they had not remained illa ashiyatan except for an afternoon aw duhaha or a morning thereof, a morning uh, of this uh, of this life. So in other words, this is subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us that life is extremely short. In fact, the Prophet says what? ما مثل الدنيا في الآخرة إلا مثل ما يجعل أحدكم إصبعه في اليم فلينظر بما يرجع. The Prophet says what? The likeness of this world in comparison to the hereafter is like anybody dipping your finger into the sea, let him see what comes out of it. You dip your finger, you see this little bit of moisture, maybe a full drop, maybe a half of a drop, whatever the case it, it may be, that sticks to it, compare that to the ocean and you realize, who cares? <laughs> you know, subhanAllah, this is nothing compared to the gigantic ocean. So. This is how you're going to feel on Yom Qiyamah, on Judgment Day. You're going to realize that life, I should have hustled for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should have put in my effort. I should have been more serious. I don't know why. I, I tried to look up different tafasir specifically about why ashiyatan aw duhaha. Like why mention two? We know that there are th several ayat where Allah ta'ala mentions that uh, they are going to feel like they only spent an hour, a sa'a. There are other ayat that mention or they're going to feel like they only spent nahar. Yawman aw ba'da yawm, a day or part of a day. There's all these different ayat that mention these small portions of time. Each of them are basically small portions of time. But this one mentions two, and I don't know why. So I wish I had an answer for that. Maybe if I did more research, I could have found something, but I didn't uh, with what the time that I uh, dedicated. Illa ashiyatan aw duhaha, Allah Ta'ala is saying what? That they're only gonna feel like they remained what? Except for either an afternoon or a morning. The only, wallahu ta'ala alam, I have one hypothesis, but again, this is sort of, you, know, you say, you know, reaching in the dark, it's just a thought, but I thought it was interesting that usually when you think of the afternoon, things are getting darker, and we think of the early morning, things are getting brighter. So it could be a reference to the fact that all I remember from my life was just, you know, this brief, sometimes happiness and sadness, you know? Like, you know, people say that life is between a, a smile and a tear, right? Life is just a, a quick, Life that, you know, sometimes good times, sometimes bad times, but it all goes by really, really quickly. So, wallahu ta'ala alam, this is just a very, you know, uh, off, the, off the cuff sort of hypothesis, but I still thought it was interesting that perhaps the fact that it's kind of mentioning when sun's going down versus sun's coming up, you know, getting darker versus getting brighter. All I remember from that life was it was very quick, and there was just a few moments of joy, a few moments of sadness, but it, it's, all, it's all over now. So, subhanAllah, Allah knows best. There are many other ayat that are similar to this. For example, فَاصْبِرْ كَمَا صَبَرَ أُولُو الْعَزْمِ مِنَ الرُّسُلِ وَلَا تَسْتَعْجِلْ لَهُمْ 
كأنهم يوم يرون ما يوعدون لم يلبثوا إلا ساعة من نهار. Again, but, uh, so Allah Taala says what? So be patient, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as were those of determination, the prophets, uh, among excuse me, among the messengers, and do not be impatient for them. Uh, it will be on the day they see that which they are promised as though they had not remained in this world except for an hour of a day. So this is exactly what I'm referring to. Just another example of Allah Ta'ala describing. It was just one short hour. Now, inshallah Ta'ala, I want to mention, just to finish off, the ring structure that I forgot to mention, part four and then part five, inshallah Ta'ala. So we're going to have to go back. The ring structure of the section four is from ayat 27 to 33. So if you look at ayah number 27, Allah Ta'ala is comparing humans to the sky and saying, you guys aren't even close, right? Are you guys more difficult than the skies above you, this entire universe? Not even close. So it seems that Allah Ta'ala is comparing us to the skies versus ayah number 33. Everything I created for you is a, a, a utility or a joy for you and your animals. So it's as if Allah is saying, your creation is much closer actually to the animals than it is to this universe. I created the universe which is actually very difficult and complex and huge and amazing. And you guys think of yourselves as like, oh, we're like gods. You know, we, 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 we're going to conquer the heavens and we're so great. And Allah is saying, you really think you're like the heavens? No, really the way that the rains come down and feed you from the earth and the way that you reproduce and the way that you interact, and the way that you fight each other, all that, you're actually much closer to animals because they also feed off of the herbage and foliage and all these different things and they also mate and they also have to sleep and basically we have so much in common with animals compared to the greatness of the other creation of this universe. So those two seem to be connected, 27 and 33. Then you get closer, you have 28 and 32, where Allah Ta'ala says, رَفَعَ سَمْكَهَا فَسَوَّاهَا and also 32 which says, وَالْجِبَالَ أَرْسَاهَا So, uh, two, two ideas of raising. Raising up the ceiling above us, this could be a reference to the ozone layer, or it could just be the heavens above us, and then also, وَالْجِبَالَ أَرْسَاهَا These mountains which are also established that are so much higher and above us. So it seems to be two references to things that are above us. Then, going closer to 29 and 31, Allah Ta'ala, in both, the reason why this one's obvious is because they both have the concept of extracting. Uh, Allah says what? Uh, that he covers over the night with darkness and that he extracts its light in the morning. So, and then 31 is what? He extracts its water and its pasture. So, there's clearly a correlation between in both this, this verb is mentioned twice. So, then therefore, in this section, the center is ayah number 30, which is saying what? The center is to say what? That we have smoothed out the earth for you. Why is that the center? Because this is a reminder, as was mentioned in, in, in the previous ayat, uh, that Allah said, I'm going to make this earth smooth. Because we, we were questioning, is there really going to be a judgment day where we're all brought back on the smooth plane? Allah is saying, I already made it smooth before. This earth wasn't smooth before. It was gravity that pushed it down and made it all smooth so that you could walk around and live this test of life. So you're doubting that I'm going to smoothen out this earth so that to raise you back up on judgment day? I've already smoothed it out before your creation. What are you guys talking about? So subhanAllah, that seems to be the center ayah here. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam bisawab. Now we move on to section 5, which is ayat 34 to 46. Allah Ta'ala says what? فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى And Allah says, كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَةً أَوْ دُحَهَا So essentially, you see the correlation between these two is saying what? On that day when the giant calamity strikes, you're going to feel like you only lived a day, or either an afternoon or an or a morning. It seems like there's a correlation between the two, right? The calamity strikes, and I feel like life was so short. So those two are connected. Then you get closer from uh, uh, ayah number 35 and 45. Uh, that Allah Ta'ala says, they'll remember then, essentially, and they will have fear. Uh, on that day, you're going to remember what you did and what you hustled for. You're going to remember exactly what you did and what you hustled for, so you're going to have that fear of, oh my goodness, what is my record looking like on that day? And ayah number 45 is what? إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَا You're only a warner to those who fear. So subhanAllah, Allah is paralleling. The disbelievers on that day will have fear. And in this life, only the people who have fear are going to be actually warned. So that parallel between the fear. Then you go closer, 36 to 44. Allah says what? وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى The disbeliever sees his final destination of this jahim and uh, ayah number 44 is what? إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ مُنْتَهَاهَا Allah decides when the end will come. So final destination and I am the one who decides the end. So you see a parallel between this, uh, the finality of both. Then you get closer. You have 37 and 
43 uh, is both about the transgressors. As for the one who does tughiyan or this transgression, Allah Ta'ala says what? Fima anta min dhikraha. Where are you with regards to the remembrance of judgment day, O transgressor? Are you in a good state? Are you in a bad state? You're in a, you're in a state of tughiyan. How are you in a state of tughiyan? And you're asking, well, when is judgment day? Clearly, uh, you're not taking this seriously enough or else you would fix your circumstances. Next, you have 38 and 42 as you get closer, which is what? Preferring of this world. They have preference for this world. And ayah number 42 is, when is judgment day? Clearly, you only ask this question, when is judgment day? Because you have preference for this dunya. So you see a clear parallel between these two. Why? Why else would they ask? When is judgment day? I want to know the last second that I have to repent. You get the idea? When is my last minute? People think like this all the time. I'll be bad, I'll be bad, I'll be bad. And then when I find out, oh, guess what? You only have 24 hours to live. Okay, I'm going to be a good person, right? So they, the only reason they're asking this question is because they have this ithar, this preference for a dunya. So those two are paralleled. Then you get closer one more. That's um, uh, 39 and 41. And it's very obvious what the co correlation between these two is. فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى and فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى <laughs> Both of those seem very, very obvious, even in sound. You know, Jahim is your final abode, Jannah is your final abode. There seems to be a parallel between those two. مَأْوَى, you know, and then finally the center verse. And this, subhanAllah, is the most powerful verse. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. In this, in this uh, surah, it seems to be one of the most heavy ayat. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ The center concept here in this section is about taqwa. And as for the one who fears the standing before his Lord, and he prevents his base desires from uh, uh, falling into, you know, whatever he wishes, just running after his whims. SubhanAllah, that seems to be the center. So, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, that is my hypothesis with regards to these sections. I've already done sections one, two, three. Now I did four and five. So you can see how each of these sections have a ring structure to it and they all paint a very powerful picture. So as you're going through it, subhanAllah, you realize this cannot be the kalam of a human being. This really must be the kalam of Allah. This must be the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who uh, take this Quran very seriously, who memorize it, who study it, analyze it, appreciate it, and inshallah, convey it to others as well. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallahu khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Comments, thoughts, questions, and make dua, inshallah, hopefully we'll do a good job with Surah Naba <laughs> next week, bi'idhnillah.